greens and a family size Perrily apple pie. All for just $9.99. All day, every day. The fabulous family feast from KFC. From the sky, satellite network, this is Sky Sports. Worthing Bears celebrated their second successive Budweiser Basketball Championship at Wembley. Winners in 93, winners in 94. This weekend, they're out to make it three in a row. Up against them in tonight's first semi-final, the new kids on the block. Budweiser League champions in their very first season, the Sheffield Sharks. Good play, excellent play. Good ball movement, good steal. Then in the second semi-final, it's Kevin Cadle's London Towers. Nice. And the Towers take on the Giants of Manchester. on the two semi-finals it's the Sheffield Sharks against the Worthing Bears and then the Manchester Giants take on the London Towers and tomorrow you can see the final that's over on Sky Sports 2 the tip-off is at 4.40 and we go live on air at 4.30 so all in all it's six hours of very exciting basketball action and it's all live from here at the Wembley Arena for a smashing family sport, you can't beat basketball, believe me. As well as bringing you all the action on the court, we'll also be giving you a good look at all the razzmatazz, fun and excitement off the court as well. And throughout the evening, we'll be talking to the coaches, the players, and of course, the fans. Uh, we just had a competition to see who could bring the best head gear, gear along. And I won. I love basketball, I only think about the basketball. Now, do you really like basketball, you just, or do you just like looking at those tall men? <laughs> Both. 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 You're obviously a Sheffield Sharks fan. What will Worthing have to do if they're going to have a chance to beat you guys tonight? All they have to do is score a lot of points. <laughs> Three pointers. Because they won't be able to get anywhere near the basket. How far have you come from tonight? And what team have you come to support? Sheffield. And who's your favourite player? Why? How far have you come tonight? I've had 200 miles. From where? From, uh, from Bridgewater. So who are you supporting tonight? I'm uh, not really sure at the moment. Probably Sheffield. Oh, right. So you're a big basketball fan? Yes, I am. So who's going to win tonight? Sheffield! <laughs> who's going to win tonight? And here inside the Wembley Arena, we're about 10 minutes away from the first of our two semi-finals tonight. The Worthing Bears, champions for the past two years, against this year's Budweiser League and National Cup winners, the Sheffield Sharks. And with us tonight, throughout the whole of tonight's programme, is the coach to the Leopards, Billy Mims. Billy, thank you for joining us. Now, you and the Leopards came so very close, didn't you, to being here tonight yourself? Well, I, I had planned on being here tonight, but it wasn't sitting with you, Suzanne. I was kind of hoping to be on the sidelines, but it's been a great basketball season. As you know, British basketball this season has been hoop heavens. I mean, we've had six teams, won over 20 games, and the seventh place team, Worthing, won 18, and they're here tonight. So it's just been one of the best seasons in British basketball history. Should make for an exciting weekend of basketball. Well, the actual league, I mean, it was that exciting. I mean, as you say, it has been the best, uh, best ever league, but it could have been down to three teams right to the very last moment, couldn't it? The Towers, the Tigers, and of course the Sheffield Sharks could have all taken that league title, couldn't they? Well, I think right up until the final whistle was blown in the Budweiser League this season, everybody was on the edge of their seats. 
I know when our final game was over, I kind of looked back and I was frantically getting to the teletext, trying to see what happened in the other league games to see who actually won. So it's been an edge of the seat league. Fans have been treated to some of the most exciting basketball you can have on this side of the Atlantic. And I'm sure this weekend we're going to see some slam dunks, some high flying, a lot of excitement. And this is what it's all about. These guys have been going for eight months. They've been sweating. They've been running. They've been listening to crazy coaches like me yell and holler at them. A little bit of yelling at the referees along the way. And a lot of excitement. So I'm sure this weekend's going to be some brilliant basketball. Well, obviously, the four teams here in the semifinals, Billy, it, was, uh, it wasn't an easy ride for all of them, was it? Not at all. I think. Um, Probably the only team that seemed to get here quickly was Manchester, and they've got to wait till the second game tonight to take it and get going. But uh, they came 2-0 over Doncaster in what was kind of a, a quick series and surprising. I thought Doncaster would probably make it a three-game series, so I'm sure Mike Hanks was nice to sit back and relax. But the other three series were all 1-1, and, and anything could have happened going into those third game. Well, Billy, let's now take a look at how those four teams made it to Wembley for these semifinals. The top eight teams in the league earn a place in the quarterfinals, played over three legs. The league winners take on the team that finished eighth, so Sheffield played Birmingham. Second place Thames Valley took on seventh place Worthing. The London Towers faced local rivals the Leopards, and the Manchester Giants met the Doncaster Panthers. In the first of those quarterfinal matchups, the Birmingham Bullets pushed Sheffield all the way. The Bullets delighted a record home crowd by winning game one. But in Sheffield, the Sharks bit back, winning games two and three to continue their already remarkable season. Worthing's season had been disappointing. The Bears came good when it mattered, though, and overturned league runner-up Thames Valley, winning the deciding game by just four points. The London Towers faced crosstown rivals the Leopard. It was another three-game series, but Kevin Cadle's men always looked in control of the final game, coming through to claim their first ever Wembley appearance. And the Manchester Giants were the only side to win their quarter-final series 2-0. The Doncaster Panthers couldn't stop them, and Manchester come to Wembley off the back of seven straight victories. So tonight, in a few minutes from now, it's the Sheffield Sharks against the Worthing Bears. And then about 9.15, depending on how long the first match runs, it's the London Towers against the Manchester Giants. Well, the first match here tonight, Billy, of course, is Sheffield against Worthing. What have Sheffield got to do to actually win, not only tonight, but possibly go through and win that final? Well, one thing I think they have to do is they have to have big games out of Garnet Gale and Chris Finch. Uh, those two guys have been kind of catalysts to their team this year. If Garnet Gale gets going early, he's a great defensive player. He can score big points for him. And if he gets off to a good start, then it means good news for Sheffield. The other thing is I think they can't rest on their laurels. They come in to hear winners of the National Cup and also of the league. So there's pressure on them. They'd like to win the treble. If they can take three of the four major titles, then they've come onto the scene in a dominant way. Well, let's take a look at the head-to-heads, Billy. This is how um, they got here. Now, um, just take us through that, that league there, the head-to-head. -head. Obviously, Sheffield were leading 3-0, so they beat them all the way, really, didn't they? Well, they've had three great games, though, as you can see. 79-73 in the first game, 84-73 in the second, uh, a close game again in the third. Everything uh, has been very good games from the two teams. Uh, Sheffield won two there, and you see, or won all three, actually, but they've all been close basketball games. And I think Worthing comes in here tonight, they're going to throw those three games out the window. Worthing is saying, we're the reigning champions, we've got the experience, and to be honest, I think the last time there was a Wembley Final Four that Alan Cunningham wasn't here, I believe King Henry VIII was still running around chasing wives. So I'm quite sure that Alan Cunningham is ready to win this thing. Was it a bit of a surprise, uh, Billy, that uh, being the current uh, uh, champions for the last two years, they did so badly during the league? Well, I think they had some injuries and they had an up and down. They had some runs where they struggled a little bit. But I think at the end of the season, Worthing again were playing as well as anybody in the country. And their starting five is a very experienced starting five. They're very big. They're one of the largest teams in the country and they've got great chemistry. What about the Manchester Giants? Because they came very strong to the end of, towards the end of the league championship, didn't they? They did, and I think one of the big factors there is the addition of Cam Johnson. I think before Cam came, they were a good team. When Cam came, they seemed to have that initial uh, extra bit of firepower 
to just kind of take them over the top. And he really motivated that team and kind of led them through some great victories down the stretch of the season. So I kind of have my hat off to Cam Johnson. I thought he made a great impact in British basketball when he arrived. Well, the atmosphere is very electric here tonight. Let's join our commentator, Mike Sharp, as he introduces the players onto the court. Okay, a very, very good evening and a very warm welcome to the Wembley Arena for the 1995 Budweiser Championships. Let's introduce the first of our teams for tonight, the Worthing Bears. Coming in at number four, Mark Scott. Number five, Herman Haru. Number six, Phil Pierce. Number seven, the legend, Alan Cunningham. Number eight, Darren Cheel. Number nine, Alan Prescott. <laughs> Number 10, Cleve Lewis. Number 12, Steve Nelson. Wearing 14, Colin. And number 15, Derek Johnson. <laughs> Assistant coach of the Worthing Bears, Neil McKelder. champions, the Sheffield Sharks, number four, Gary Smith, number seven, Adrian Anderson, number eight, Jason Swain, Sean McKay. 11, Pluto Voliotis. Number 12, Chris Finch. Number 13, Roger. Number 14, Todd Cawthorn. And number 15, Richard Wendell. And the coach of the Sheffield Sharks, the Budweiser Coach of the Year, Mr. Jim Brandon. Ladies and gentlemen,
our commentators Mark Harvey and Mike Sharp. Thank you very much indeed, Suzanne, my co-commentator for these games tonight. Mark Harvey of the John Carr Doncaster Panthers. First of all, you must be disappointed about not being here as a team. Definitely. I mean, when we lost to Manchester that night, I, uh, I think I slept like a baby up every hour crying. Okay, <laughs> okay this is game one of the two games tonight. Worthing Bears versus the Sheffield Sharks. Let's take a look at this Worthing Bears team. Strong team. Very experienced, very big backcourt. Uh, they've, been, they've been surprisingly resilient. Uh, they've had a very disappointing season uh, by their very high standards, but uh, I expect them uh, to come out firing on all cylinders tonight, and they present uh, Sheffield with some tough challenges in terms of their defense and their size. The starting five will be Herman Harid, Alan Cunningham, of course, who's done such a great job for them this evening. Cleve Lewis, Steve Nelson, and Colin Irish. One of the keys here, and the guy who has really got to step up as far as I'm concerned, is Herman Harid. Leader of the league in field goal percentage and, uh, and rebounding. Uh, Sheffield are going to have their hands full if, the, if this left-hander gets off tonight. I mean, he, you're, you're right. I think he really has to step it up. Uh, also, Colin Irish. Here we see Herman Harid. Uh, I mean, he does it all for them, and he plays the big D. He also blocks a lot of shots for them inside, and uh, he's just a fabulous all-around player. Herman Harid, one to watch tonight here at Wembley. Let's take a look now at the Sheffield Sharks and the starting five of Garnet Gale, Sean Mackay, Chris Finch, Roger Huggins and Todd Hawthorne. The Roger Huggins, the man. Uh, he is. I mean, the guy does it all for them. Uh, he runs the floor, plays the D, rebounds. He's a good passer. He doesn't make many mistakes out there. They're really going to have to work hard uh, as a team. Uh, to stop him tonight. Worthing are going to have their hands full, undoubtedly. This is the best team in the league, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they don't have uh, any one person that's going to necessarily do it all. They've got any number of uh, any number of players that, uh, that can hurt you from uh, just about anywhere on the floor. Now, Mark, you've had a big article in this week's Slam Dunk magazine, taking a look at the four teams. You predict Manchester to win the whole thing. Are you sticking with that? I think so. It's a matchup thing. I mean, I think Manchester are going to have their hands full with London Towers later on tonight. Uh, but I feel if they do get past uh, London and, uh, and Sheffield are able to get past Worthing, uh, Manchester present uh, Sheffield with some very difficult matchups. And, uh, and I'm just picking them to, to win it. They've been playing so well lately. Uh, they're my, they're my pick, but it's going to be close, and it's not going to be easy for anybody. Okay, and who's going to win this one tonight, then? I, I think Sheffield are going to get by. I think they present uh, Worthing with just too much depth and uh, too much firepower, too much defensive intensity for the 40 minutes. Uh, but anything can happen. Uh, Worthing have got more experience than anybody else here tonight, and uh, uh, they're going to be a formidable opponent for, uh, for Sheffield. Coach Jimmy Brandon in the shot. What a season he's had. Yeah, it's fabulous. I mean, uh, nobody would have expected it at the beginning of the season. He's really done a tremendous job uh, for Sheffield. He's uh, really ins inspired these guys to, to, to take it to another level and, and play uh, a style of basketball that, that I don't think has uh, been seen in, in the British game before. Jimmy Brandon and his Sheffield Sharks and the Worthing Bears assistant coach, Neil McAlduff, he handles the duties while Alan Cunningham is on the court. What do you, what do you think to, uh, to Jim Brandon's new haircut? Do you think he's got that ready for this weekend or what? <laughs> so many guys want to do this when they make it through to the championships. Don't they? Would you have done it had you been here? <laughs> I think I'm ugly enough. I don't need to do that. Okay, this is it. Game time from Wembley Arena, the 1995 Budweiser Championships, live on Sky Sports. This is going to be a cracking night of Budweiser basketball action. There's the man. He's won eight trophies in a row. Boy, well, he will if he wins this weekend. He's won seven in a row so far and still going strong. The jump is going to be Alan Cunningham versus Huggins. Herman Harid has the ball. Unbelievable when you consider that Allen's 40 years of age. I mean, the guy's got a physique of a 20-year-old. Of a He's on the ball now. Good defensive pressure inside. Cleve Lewis has the ball. Cleve. Cleve goes to the hole off the glass. Doesn't get that rebound. Herman for two. There we see Herman Harid on the boards very early. Sheffield have got to keep him off the boards. The reason he got that rebound is Cleve Lewis was allowed to penetrate and draw the defenders up, and Herman stepped inside to pick up the rebound. 
Sean Mackay for the Sheffield Sharks. Here we see Sheffield's half-court game, very patient. They move the ball around, get everybody involved early and make you play lots of defense. Huggins leans in, doesn't get there. Rebound, Colin Irish. Brings the ball up for the Bears, Irish. Irish, oh, good idea, Colin Irish. Alan Cunningham couldn't handle that. Nice play by Colin. He's another guy to watch out for tonight. That man is deadly offensively. Moving the ball around the top. Worthing in a man-to-man -man defense here, but they're packing in against the big players. It looks like we've got our first whistle on the play. It's Alan Cunningham with the foul. He blocked uh, Roger going through on the baseline. It's going to be a physical game tonight. Ball will come in from the end line. I hope the referees let him play a little bit. Finch for no points. Cawthorn doesn't get the put back. That's not like him. Sheffield are looking a little bit uptight, but they're, they've been guilty of this all season, starting off a little bit edgy. Uh, they'll settle down and uh, start playing some ball in a few minutes. Let's see if we got a basket. No basket. Foul there on Todd Cawthorn blocking. Here we see Herman takes him to the right-hand side and... Todd moves underneath him and uh, foul before the shot was taken, so it's possession to Worthing on the, on the sideline. Ball is with Cleve Lewis. Irish. Irish leans in again, looked to get an extra step there. He didn't, the referee spotted it. Here come the Sharks again. Worthing looking a little bit more relaxed out there tonight. I think that's their experience showing. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for Sheffield just to settle things down. Jimmy will let him play a bit. Sean Mackay for three. First three of the night. Sean Mackay drains it for the Sharks. There's an example of, I mean, everybody on that floor for Sheffield will hurt you. Who's got it? Cunningham gets the two. Good second effort by Worthing on the boards again. Sheffield must keep them off the boards. They're a big team, and uh, they work very hard at the offensive end. Gale, Gale gets the two. Nice move, little pump fake crossover step, and uh, finishes with the nice layup. Cleve Lewis. Feeds Herman Harid. Herman down low, doesn't get there. That's going to be a Worthing ball. What Sheffield are going to look to do against Herman Reed is force him to use his right hand. He's a left-handed player, and his right hand is by far weaker. If they can force him to the right-hand side, he'll struggle. Steve Nelson back into Irish down low. That's nice from Colin Irish. I think uh, Garnet Gale's going to struggle with uh, uh, Colin Irish in the low post tonight. He's a fabulous defensive player, but you see Colin there getting the ball and just taking him right to the hoop. I, I don't think uh, Garnet's going to have much joy down there tonight. Cawthorn, Cawthorn, nice move, rejected by Alan Cunningham. First block of the night, Alan Cunningham does it. That looked a bit like goaltending to me, but uh, referees has played it on, so Worthing get a break, I think. Cunningham gets the run. Goal line, eight points to five. No, that's, I think that might be call, uh, Alan Cunningham's second foul, which is not good news for Worthing at all. Alan can't believe the call. Sheffield are going to look to go right back at him, I would imagine. Try to get Alan in, in picking up his third foul. They really can't afford to lose him off the court tonight. Well, that's one of that's one of Worthing's weaknesses. They're not as deep as the other teams here in the final four, and uh, if they get into foul trouble, it's really going to hurt them. Uh, down, down a stretch of a game. Sean Mackay with the ball on the rebound by Huggy Bear Huggins. Finch. Huggins doesn't get there. Who's coming up with it? Cunningham. Court to Cleve Lewis gets it back, puts it up for three, and gets there. <laughs> Alan Cunningham is 
been doing it all season. He's got a fabulous three-point percentage. It's up in the 40s, I believe, and that, that, is, a, that is a phenomenal uh, three-point percentage. A four out of ten uh, is a tremendous percentage from that range. What is it about this Worthing Bears team that they can have a season as bad as they've had this season, yet when they arrive on this Wembley floor, they put it together. Well, you said it before the game, Mike. This is their home court, and uh, they've been here that much. They've got that much experience. This is a one-off, so uh, anything can happen. Foul is called. It's on Colin Irish. That's number one on Colin. Timeout has been called by coach Jimmy Brandon for the Sheffield Sharks. The first timeout. Let's go down and take a listen to what Coach Brandon has to say. Yeah, about okay, wait for down, take the money out and least be tough. Yeah, come on guys. Inside with Ben dominated. Lay if you don't want to out jump him, then box him out, let somebody else get the rebound. Okay, Cruz is seven for hundred right now. Okay, we're gonna go four out. We're going four out, play some defense, lay some body rebound. We can't, we hold our way. We can't break unless we get the ball. Everybody rebound. Let's go. Don't let him get it that close to the basket. That's it. You heard Jimmy Brandon. You heard Jimmy Brandon there talking about rebounding. Uh, that's got to be a key element in their game. They must keep whirling off the boards. He just had a little word with Garnet Gale. I don't know if you caught it. He said, don't let him get you down so low. That he's talking about Colin Irish posting it up because yeah. Colin's going to go to work on him all night down there. and He can't let him establish that position inside. He's got to keep him out of there early. First substitution in for the Sheffield Sharks for the first time. Pluto Voliotis is in. Roger Huggins gets a spell on the bench. Broken up by Cunningham. They, they, they see good weak side help defense. The Pluto, uh, sorry, uh, Cawthorn had the law pass. Cunningham comes across and knocks it away from the weak side, helping out his teammate on defense. Ball is with Finch. Finch looks to go baseline. Got bumped, but got the bucket anyway. Chris Finch. Nice control, nice finishing, uh, nice touch. Takes the hit with the body, but uh, able to keep the shoulder square and a nice soft touch to finish. Thrown away by Cleve Lewis. Colin Irish couldn't control. Turnover. In for the first time for the Sheffield Sharks. We're in four. Gary Smith. They call him Chicken around the Sheffield area. <laughs> I still don't know why they call him Chicken. You know, Mike. No, I don't. <laughs> Perhaps I'll find out later on. Doesn't get there with the three. Rebound, Herman Harree. Here comes the Bears again. Bears looking to three-peat. They won it the last two years running. Can they make it three in a row? Three teams here trying to stop it. Irish on the ball looking for the long pass to Cunningham. Cunningham with a turnaround jumper doesn't get there. He's feeling pretty good tonight. Here you see, gets the offensive rebound, takes the hit, goes up and finishes with a nice dunk. Four points personal for Harid, 13 points to seven. I think those Meals are lead. feeling a bit better tonight. <laughs> Pluto is short. Who's coming up with it? Gary has it. Pluto walks with it. Definitely took the step before he put the ball on the floor. Another thing that's got to be concerning Jim Brandon right now is his team seem to be trying to play one-on-one -on -one ball a little bit, and uh, that's not, not, not their style. They, all year they've been doing the team thing, and they come out tonight against Worthing, and they look to be trying to take people on one-on-one. -on -one. It's not their style, so they've got to settle down offensively and let the ball do the work by passing it around. There's Herman again. Herman again for two. Boy, he is unstoppable in that low post. He's I do believe. Inside. He is absolutely killing them right now. Three minutes, 25 seconds left to play in the first quarter. 15 points to seven, good start for the Worthing Bears. Hawthorne has the ball to Pluto. They're not getting close to the basket, are they? No, not at all. Worthing's a big team, and they really do a good job of packing in the defense low around the hoop. Force you to shoot a shot like that from way out of, way downtown. 
in a one-off game, Worthing are capable of beating anybody. It's just their lack of depth that's hurt them and injuries that have hurt them uh, over the full season. But on this weekend, uh, they could really pull off, uh, pull off a miracle finish here for themselves. The ball is with Clee Lewis against the screen from Cunningham and then gives it up across for a three-on-one break. Garner takes it all away, doesn't get there. Pluto puts it back. That's goaltending. Basket is good for Pluto, no doubt about that. I suppose Alan Cunningham thought that was worth a try. I feel he got away with one earlier, so maybe he thought, thought he'd try it again and uh, knock the ball out of the hoop. It was on its way down, and uh, you're not allowed to touch the ball when it's on its way down. Back in the ball game, wearing 13, Roger Huggins. There it is. You see, Pluto comes with the ball. The ball definitely hits the backboard. It's clearly on its way down, and uh, Alan Cunningham knocks it out of the way, uh, and that's goaltending. In for the first time, Alan Prescott wears nine for the Bears. Alan Cunningham gets a spell on the bench. Alan Cunningham has uh, spoken really highly of this young kid, uh, Alan Prescott, 21-year-old. Uh, bit, bit of an outside threat, and uh, he's, he, I think he's quite high on him, really. He, he, he presents him with another threat from outside. Nice turnaround jumper by Colin Irish, drains the two. 17 points to nine. Two minutes, nine seconds left to play in the first. Foul is called, I think it's on nine. Alan Prescott, yes it is. That's his first. And the ball. Ball is with. Foul on Roger Huggins there on, on setting a legal screen. When you, when you set a screen or a pick, you must be stood still. And uh, Roger kind of moved over and uh, knocked the uh, Worthing uh, defender out of the way. And uh, that, that's his foul. Going out with two points. Not so far for the Sheffield Sharks, is it? No, they, they're, they, they've been guilty of this a, a lot of times this season, getting off to these slow starts. Uh, there's still an awful lot of basketball to be played, of course, but Worthing do look like they're in the uh, in the driver's seat at the minute. Colin Irish gives it up to the man at the top, Herman Hari. Nice bake. Oh, carried it is the decision. Tough call, that one. That was a tough call. It's. Uh, it's, it's what he's called as a double dribble. I think he felt Herman uh, held the ball up a little bit too long before he, you know, continued to dribble the ball. And uh, that's a tough blow because Herman had made a nice move. Cawthorn. Haven't seen much from Cawthorn as yet. Swain, just in the ball game, hits his first two. Jason Swain is uh, he's a young player and he's a confidence player. And hitting that first shot will, uh, will do him the power of good. It's quite deadly when he's on from the three-point range. Steve Nelson on the ball. Pushed off. That's a foul on Steve Nelson. Used the elbow to move his man out of the way. That just ain't allowed. You just see here uh, Alan Cunningham getting a little bit irate with somebody. I don't know whether he's upset with, uh, with uh, Steve Nelson for that or not, but uh, he wants the ball moving rather than uh, a lot of dribbling. He wants the ball to move through the air with passing, I think. One minute, 12 seconds left to play in the first. 17 points to 11. Worthing Bears lead it by six. Gary Smith goes baseline, drives there, wraps it around, doesn't get there. Huggins has the ball, comes back to the top. Got it, Gale for three, doesn't get the road. In and out. Sheffield do look very tentative. It's, uh, it's not like them at all, but uh, I'm expecting them to settle down and uh, start to play a little more casual. Three on two break. Garnet Gale has it. Nice stutter step. Gale lays it up, doesn't get there. Blocking foul, I think. That's on Steve Nelson. That is number two. Again, the referee deciding that uh, when Garnet had established his move to the hoop, uh, uh, Steve Nelson was moving underneath, didn't have his feet set, and that's the important thing. Uh, it's probably the most difficult call in basketball, the, the charge block call, um, and he's, he's decided to call a, a block on Steve Nelson there, which is a defensive foul. And Steve with two fouls hits the bench, back in comes Cleve Lewis. 33 seconds left to play in the first. I would think that Sheffield will look to press here if, uh, if Garnet's successful on, uh, on these free shots. First one is good for Garnet Gale. And number 
number two. Here they go into a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one zone press. They're going to look to double-team the ball right after the out-of-bounds. Off the foot, new 30. 31 seconds left to play in the quarter. It's been a very effective press for them all season. Cutting in with the ball. Prescott puts it on the floor, gives it back to Cunningham, puts it up for three. That was an early shot, not like, not like the Bears. Looks like Gale got hit. I think he took a, a finger in the eye or, or got just slapped in the face by Colin. I don't think it was anything intentional. You're right, that was a very early shot. It's unlike Cunning, uh, Allen. I don't think he needed to, uh, to do that. He, I think he got a fingernail across the face there, but I'm sure he'll be all right. The, the reason that that was perhaps a bad shot was now Sheffield have 18 seconds to get the last shot of the quarter, and really Worthing wanted to have the last shot of the quarter and not give Sheffield this chance to uh, to get to another two points closer. Sheffield have come back well into this, haven't they? Yeah, if, they, if they're able to convert a, a basket here, they could be, you know, one or two points behind. Huggins doesn't get there. Jason Swain has it, puts it up off the glass. It is, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go. Basket is good. Drains the three with the buzzer beater. To nice find shot. Personal puts it down to a one point ball game. 17 points to 16. Sheffield Sharks were down, but now they're back. 17 16, let's take the break. You're watching Sky Sports. Continuing our coverage of the Benson and Hedges competition, Sky Sports presents last year's quarter finalists, Kent versus Somerset, live from Canterbury. Top class cricket, exclusively live starting Tuesday morning at 10.45 on Sky Sports. Right now at the MFI sale, there's up to 50% of kitchen cabinets in 45 great styles, including wood, laminate and veneer finishes. There's also 35% of bedroom units in 20 dreamy styles designed to suit all tastes. So don't delay. Hurry down to the MFI sale. It's on now. Her Majesty the Queen Mother is a most admired member of the royal family. To commemorate her 90th birthday, the Royal Mint issued an official £5 coin. It could be yours, and it won't cost you a penny more than its face value. Phone on 0800 774 774 for our face value offer. This coin is official legal tender worth £5, meaning that you simply change £5 for £5, and the Queen Mother coin costs you nothing. Dial 0800 774 774. The lines are open now. Order your Queen Mother coin at the face value of £5 only. It will be yours for 10 days on approval. Postage and packing is free. And you may pay by cheque or credit card. Call MDM now on 0800 774 774. With eight free Mirror Instant Scratch cards, there are thousands of cash prizes to be won. And you could win £50,000 instantly in the Sunday Mirror tomorrow. Turning Monday at 6, Spellbound, it's your chance to win a thousand pounds. With lucky letters, call this number anytime except between 5.30 and 6 or write to this address to receive your letters. If they're lucky, you could be telephoned during the show. Answer a simple question and you've won a thousand pounds. Be watching Spellbound, returning Monday at 6 on Sky One. The Budweiser Basketball Championships 1995, live from the Wembley Arena. My co-commentator from John Carr, Doncaster Panthers, Mr. Mark Harvey. That was a cracking first half, first quarter, Mark. Yes, it was. Uh, Sheffield got off to the shaky start, but settled down, and uh, uh, Jason Swain hit a, hit a very nice three-pointer, showed a lot of uh, presence to know there was only a couple seconds left in the game, and uh, and finished with a, with a big three-pointer to bring them back to within one point. As we start the second quarter, the ball is with Steve Nelson. Interesting statistic, Mark, from that, uh, that, that, that the end of the first quarter, a 9-2 run for the Sharks in the last three and a half minutes. They've been doing it all season. They've been uh, just blitzing people really quickly, and, uh, and anything can happen with this team. Uh, they're very, very explosive. Irish off the glass for two. That was a tough play. Beautiful move down the middle. Showed a lot of strength to, to pull his way through there, and, uh, and a nice soft touch off the backboard. Hawthorne. 
Anybody watching that three-pointer he took just before that, that was from downtown London, but hey, he hits those. <laughs> Sean McKay feeds Huggins down low. Huggins puts it on the floor, turn around, jumper is no good. Rebound, Herman Hurie. There comes the Bears again. Worthing showing their inside presence. Oh, nice, nice play. Nice presence of uh, mind to, to get that ball up the floor. Let's see what we've got. Offensive foul is the call. Who is it on? It's on number five, Herman Harid. That is foul number one. Bit unlucky, but Herman showing a lot of determination on the boards tonight. He's going to the boards like he means it every time. You see Allen here missing the shot. Who comes over the back and picks up the ball but Herman Harid. I don't know what the call. I think a, the referee was a bit concerned about him dipping his shoulder and, uh, and bumping Roger Huggins out of the way. I think that's why he got the foul. 17 foul market is now up every time. That's right. The Bears up. commit a foul. We'll go to the free throw line. That's going to be an important factor for the rest of this quarter as well. Ty Clark on there showing some nice touch on the baseline. Finally. Eight minutes, 32 seconds left to play in the half. Irish for three. Doesn't get there. Rebound Cunningham. Cunningham off the glass. One-handed is no good. Got it, Gale. Wrap around pass to Finch for no points. Both teams a little bit cold from the three-point area, but uh, uh, Colin Irish has got to have a lot of confidence shooting that three-pointer, knowing uh, Herman Reed and Alan Cunningham are inside to pick up anything, it, uh, anything that he misses. That was a ridiculous Colin Irish move. He was bumped right out of court, put it up one-handed, and drained it. Nice move. Again, showing a lot of strength on the floor to, to, uh, to shoulder pass the guy there. And, and, and then when it's time to release the shot, really soft hands and a nice gentle touch around the hoop. I think that's why he's probably one of the best scorers this game uh, has ever seen. Okay, he's coming in. Garnet Gale is not allowed to uh, go out at the moment. Wrong possession. That's right. There you saw Garnet trying to hit uh, Todd Cawthorn long and a uh, bit of an unforced turnover, really. Again, Sheffield uh, do that from time to time as well. Herman lost the ball, got it back, then lost it again. Sean McKay breaks the triple team. Huggins has the ball long to Finch for three points. Chris Finch finally drains the three. Again, a beautiful transition by Sheffield. Here you see them coming down, spreading the ball out wide. Nobody to guard Chris, and if you leave him open from there, he's going to burn you. The ball game is all tied up, 21 apiece. Seven minutes, 34 seconds left to play in the half. Steve Nelson on the pressure from Sean McKay, forced to pick it up. Herman Harid has it. Back to Nelson, puts it up for three points. Steve Nelson. Steve showing a little bit of versatility there of his own with that uh, with that shot. Nice, uh, that's the advantage he has over Sean McKay, but just be able to shoot it over him all night. Huggins for the Sharks, comes back to Pluto. Sean, nice feed, gets it back, puts it up for three, is off right. Huggins allows Finch to pick it up. Finch for three, is long. Shoot until you score. Pluto for two. Sheffield showing now. Showing the domination they've had on the boards all season there. Three or four different players getting involved in keeping that ball alive and uh, never say die attitude and uh, they end up with the two points. One point ball game, six minutes, 32 seconds left to play. Irish is off. Air ball from Irish, not like him. Who's got it? Still Cunningham, still doesn't get there. Cleve Lewis, I think, with the tip. Really showing some determination of their own on the offensive boards. Neither team seems to be, keep, be able to keep the other out off the, uh, off the offensive boards. Pluto doesn't get there. Rebound, Cawthorn with the tip. Pluto has it. Pluto is fouled by Steve Nelson. Make that number three, I think, on Nelson. It's been at least four possessions up and down the court where both teams have dominated the offensive boards. Both Sheffield and Worthing have got to be concerned about that. You've got to keep your opponent to one shot. You've got to keep them off the offensive boards. It just kills you to play 20 seconds of defense and then give up second and third shots. Assistant coach Neil McKeldoff takes Nelson out of the ball game with three fouls. Pluto going to the line for two, of course, as I mentioned before. The Bears now in the penalty. 
with uh, Steve Nelson on three fouls with a little bit over six minutes left to go before halftime. Uh, you're only allowed five fouls in the game and then you're out. So he's got to be uh, a little bit careful not to get into any more foul trouble before halftime. And of course, Alan Cunningham already has two as well. Yeah, this is going to be a problem for Worthing over the 40 minutes is, the, is their depth and their ability to, to, to stay fresh and out of foul trouble and uh, sustain this tremendous uh, first half. Foul is called. The call will go on number 12, Chris Finch. That's on Chris Finch. Here you see Cleve Lewis taking Chris to the basket. He's got such a. Uh, such an elusive style, you, you never know when he's going to explode off the blocks and take you to the hoop. He's very quick, but it's a, it's a misleading kind of uh, style. It's, uh, you, you kind of go to sleep guard him, then bang, he explodes in your face and gets off for a whole lot of points. In the ball game for the first time for the Sheffield Sharks, wearing seven, Adrian Anderson. Todd Cawthorn gets a spell on the bench. Leave on the line. I'm hoping Adrian shows us some of his uh, incredible athletic ability. This guy's uh, one of the best jumpers in the uh, in the game here, and uh, hopefully we'll see some of that uh, down the stretch in the first half here. Cleve gets one of the two. Three points personal, 27 points to 25. Worthing Bears lead it by two. Huggins puts it on the floor, then fades away, doesn't get the drop. Defensive spell there by Worthing. Controlled the boards. Oh, oh, oh. There was a bit of hooking there by Colin Irish. No doubt about that the foul is called on seven. I think Sheffield have uh, a right to be a bit upset about that call. Uh, you saw the hand come round the waist on uh, on Adrian there. He, he's got to feel a little frustrated with that call, but then that's the call you get when you're the vet. So uh, here you go. It's Wembley Final Four. What are you going to do? Prescott. Cleveland. Reed has it. Reed puts it on the floor, gets the whistle. The foul is on Pluto. Make that number one. Herman's a real handful for Sheffield so far in this first half. We see him uh, again, the left handed player going hard to the hoop. Pluto give and get ground straight back, but uh, impeding uh, Herman's uh, path to the basket, and so it's a blocking foul. Okay, you're a coach. How do you guard a guy like Herman? I think you've got to force him to use his right hand if he puts the ball down on the floor and try to keep him as far away from the basket as you can. Uh, they can beat you from the outside. If he gets inside, he's almost unstoppable. The other thing is you must, absolutely must, put a body on him when their shot goes up and keep him off the offensive boards. Cunningham keeps it alive. Cleve has it. Irish. Good hustle by Cunningham that time. Irish with a big fade away. Doesn't get there. Rebound. Adrian Anderson took it away from Cleve Lewis. Hawthorne feeds Huggins down low. Back out to Gale. Got it. Puts it on the floor. Gets a whistle. It's on nine. I think it is Alan Prescott. Yes, it is. Makes that number two on Allen. You see Sheffield there playing what we call a two-man game. Garnet spotting up on the wing on the same side as Roger, getting the ball inside. Worthing react by collapsing down. Roger kicks it back out to Garnet, who's open or is able to shoot or drive. And that time he chose to take uh, Allen one-on-one. -on -one. And I don't think Allen's really got the quickness. Here you see it. Takes him on into the middle. And uh, Allen's bodying him up and fouling him with his chest. First one is good for Garnet Gale. Five personal. I'm surprised Worthing hasn't shown us some of their 3-2 uh, zone here in the first half because they are in a bit of foul trouble and it's an effective zone to keep a team like Sheffield off the board. Makes them both ball game all tied up, 27 apiece, five minutes left to play in the half. Double team came that time, no problem for Cleve. Cleve, the 360, puts it up, is short, rebound, Cawthorn, and he throws it away. That's a couple of unforced turnovers that Sheffield have had this uh, this half. They're a young team, and, and they do that, but uh, they bounce back well from turnovers, and they, uh, they really hustle for each other and work hard to get the ball back. Herman. Herman, a long two off the glass, doesn't get there, goes in for the rebound, and guess who gets the rebound? Herman Hurree. Absolutely. First thing, Todd Cawthorn did two things wrong there. Didn't force him to use his right hand on the dribble, and then didn't box him out after he shot the ball, and he was able to go pick up his own rebound. 
Adrian Anderson has the ball, comes around the top. It's not going to be easy, but you must do the little things. You've got to win the little battles uh, in this game tonight, both sides. You've got to win the little battles if they want to be successful. Wrap around pass, it's not bad. Cleve Lewis. We've got three minutes, 58 seconds left to play in. Cleve Lewis with a nice running jumper. What a little lovely move. What a nice little shake and bake on the wing and just lovely little change of pace right around his, uh, his opponent and uh, lovely finish inside. Another rebound for Herman Harid. See Herman walking the ball up the floor. He's saying, listen, guys, I'm working awful hard here. I need a break. I need to slow it down a bit and get my lungs back. in the half. That's good going. Worthing is one of the most effective teams at penetrating the middle of the key and kicking out to an open man either for the jump shot or somebody who's attacking the hoop as we saw Alan do there. Timeout has been called by the Worthing Bears coach Alan Cunningham. Three minutes, 26 seconds left to play in the half. Let's go and take a listen to what coach Alan Cunningham is saying to his boys. Five out. Remember, if we go five out, make sure you guys swing through. Okay? Don't just record it like going outside. Yeah. 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 You get two two timeouts and a half, Mike, and uh, it's use them or lose them. And so I think Alan's taking that to, to give his guys a bit of a rest, which is very, very wise indeed. He's got, got the, the uh, veteran legs out there. They need a blow. The game was starting to pick up a bit. He really wants to, uh, he's stressing there to, to, to keep Sheffield to one shot. That is, when they take a shot, they must have their own rebounds, not let them uh, get the ball back. Ball is in. Irish down low, the wraparound pass to Cleve is good for two. Cleve Lewis. So you see Colin Irish creating problems in the post for Sheffield again. This time they try to deal with it with the double team, but he kicks it back out, and Cleve Lewis hits the open shot. Four-point ball game, 31 to 27. Three minutes, five seconds left to play in the half. Hawthorne has the ball. Comes around the top to Jason Sway. Interesting statistic just being passed for me. Roger Huggins, 0 for 5 in the ball game so far. That's not like him. Not like Roger at all, but uh, you watch out in the second half. I mean, he's capable of scoring 30 points in one half of basketball, so uh, you, you can never sort of let up on the guy. You've got to keep hard at him and uh, force him to, to take difficult shots. On an Irish getting the whistle. Foul is called on 14. That's Todd Cawthorn. Make that number two on Cawthorn. Irish will go to the line. He was hanging there for that call, wasn't he? Well, he's a tremendous athlete here. Uh, uh, drawing the foul. He's goals around Garnet. Change of pace. Holds. Creates a contact and has a go at, uh, at the three-point play. If that shot had gone in, it would have counted, and he would have got one shot. If the shot didn't go in, so he's entitled to two shots at the free throw line. One of the best free throw shooters in our league. Misses the first one, gets the second. 32 points to 27. Two and a half left to play in the first half. Clay Blue is trying to harass uh, Chris Finch there on the, on the okay, dribbling, but they don't want to gamble too much. They want to stay packed in and force Sheffield to shoot the long shot and control the boards just like that. Cleve Lewis comes away with it. Cunningham comes to help. Cunningham fakes one way, then the other puts it up. Doesn't get the drop. Herman Harid 
Gets the rebound with Cawthorn. We've got us a jump ball. Herman Harid is, uh, he's had his Wheaties today or something. I mean, that guy is playing possessed and uh, he's working so hard on the boards. I hope he can, for Worthing's sake, I hope he can maintain this, uh, this kind of intensity for the whole 40 minutes of the game because uh, here we see Pluto's coming back in for Sheffield. They'll be rotating big guys on him all night trying to just uh, wear, him wear him down. Huggins, will he take it all the way? Good defensive position by Prescott. Oh, good ball movement. Huggins has it back. Let's see what we got. A three-second ball. Oh. Tough call. Tough call for Sheffield, but uh, they they made one too many passes there, I think, and uh, and they got caught for three seconds in the lane. Less than two minutes to play in the first half. Remember, two games live tonight on Sky. We're in game one at the moment. Worthing Bears versus the Sheffield Sharks. Irish drains the two with a running jumper to 11 personal. There's not much you can do to stop that shot. When he's hitting those, you're in a lot of trouble. Jason Swain. Swain, the fadeaway is no good. Irish with the rebound. Worthing starting to assert themselves on their own defensive boards now, and, uh, and Alan Cunningham's got to be thrilled with that, keeping them to one shot. Seven-point lead, the biggest lead of the ball game so far for the Worthing Bears. Irish for two, brings it out to nine. Worthing are killing them inside. They, uh, Sheffield have really got to do a better job of uh, giving some weak side help. Roger Huggins was a little bit late on that, and uh, Colin was able to get the shot away. Inside the final minute, 36 points to 27. The Bears with the lead. Foul is called on Cleve Lewis. That is foul number one. I think Worthing are, are, are setting their stall out early here. They're saying, look, we're not afraid to uh, to go toe-to-toe -to 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 with you tonight, Sheffield, and we're going to battle with you, Hammer and Tom, all the way. They've got nothing to lose. It's a one-shot deal. They can worry about tomorrow after tonight. There is no, no tomorrow if you don't make it through tonight. So you, it's a one-shot deal, and... and they're playing a heck of a ball game. They, they've settled down on the defensive boards, and uh, they're really forcing Sheffield to, to make some difficult offensive plays. Roger Huggins finally gets onto the score sheet. It's not often you see him take a whole half to get on the score sheet, is it, Mike? No, it isn't. Long time ago since we had the last bucket by the Sharks. Nice two by Luto. There you see the zone press again by Sheffield. Uh, Worthy did a fabulous job right there. Oh, watch out! What a lovely way to act. You won't see this press broken any better than this. Where they get the ball in, straight down the court to Prescott, and straight across to a Herman Reed, streaking down the lane for the dunk. What a nice play. That's the way to do it. Inside the final 30, Herman Harid commits the offense at the other end. That's foul number two on Herman. Not a good foul. Not a good foul. Stops the clock. It allows Sheffield to score by, uh, some points without the clock running it also allows them to put on their pressure and uh, it, it gives Herman another foul which isn't going to be good uh, going into the second half timeout called by coach Alan Cunningham and Neil McKelda for the Worthing Bears let's go down and join Sheffield coach Jim Brandon let's hear what he's got to say let's go 12 Blue's at the point Loose at the point. No, let's switch it up. Let's put you at the point. You two on the wing, you're back on top. Now, just like what Huggins just said, okay, if the ball moves, guys, you got to sprint back. Especially the guy in the middle. Todd, you got to talk to him. Let him know if back. You got to talk to him as well. But if that ball moves, you got to sprint back or they get a left. No excuse. Hey, guys, let's go. Listen, we only got 27 seconds. Get it every effort. Oh, Jimmy Brandon reviewing the 1-2, 1-1 one, one, one zone press, which has been so successful them, for them all season. It just got broken very badly there with Herman Harid dunking the ball. Uh, they, what he's saying is when the ball goes long, if the ball goes over your head in this press, you must sprint, absolutely sprint back on defense and pick up anybody uh, in a white jersey that's trailing or, or moving towards the basket. We got us an eight-point ball game, 27 seconds left to play in the half. Roger Huggins on the line for two. Roger Huggins to two personal. Two. The lead is down to six. Mark Scott in the 
pressure on. Mark Scott in the ball game for the first time with a nice outlet pass. To Cleve gets it back. Colin Irish looks up at the clock, sees there are 14 seconds left to play. Let's see what the Bears have got for us. I think he wants to go one on one. Yes, he does. Wraps it around to Cleve, puts it up for no points. Got it again, needs to get it off if he wants the shot. Too late. That is too late. The end of the first half. 32 points to 38. Worthing Bears lead it by six. How was that one? That was fabulous. Uh, I think that half for Worthing was about Herman Harade and his tremendous effort on the boards and running the floor. For Sheffield, I think it was a bit of impatience uh, on offense, a little bit too much individual stuff, and uh, not containing uh, her, uh, Worthing on the boards. Colin Irish leads all scorers with 13 points. No surprise there. No, I mean, the guy's a phenomenal scorer. He, uh, he can shoot the ball from anywhere. You must get out on him very tight to stop him shooting the three, and then that gives him advantage, taking you to the hoop for the, uh, for the penetration shot. And then, of course, if that's taken away from him, he's got the dish for, the, for somebody who's open. Now, this is not the first time the Sheffield Sharks have trailed at the half, but what will coach Jimmy Brandon be saying to him in the locker room now? I think he'll be very encouraging with them. I think he needs to, to, to instill a bit of confidence in them, get their spirits up a bit. They're playing a little bit lackluster, um, and they need, to, uh, they need to just work harder on the boards. We got some entertainment going on here at the Wembley Arena, all the way from the USA Slamson, from the Sacramento Kings. I bet you can do this, can't you? I was going to say, Mike, I thought you applied for that job. <laughs> I wanted it, they wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> At the half, 38 points to 32, a six-point lead for the Worthing Bears. We'll be back for the second half. You're watching Sky Sports. This is Crunch Weekend in the Premiership. On Ford Escort Super Sunday, West Ham facing the drop, the hot favourites Blackburn. The clash could give Rovers the Premiership title if Manchester United fail to beat Coventry in Ford Escort Monday Night Football. The Premiership race has never been so tight. Two crucial matches live this weekend, only on Sky Sports. Worst thing that could ever happen to you? Worst thing? Well, it must be uh, having a bath or something. That's the worst you can think of, is it? Well, that's pretty bad, isn't it? That? Well, yes, but think of something even worse than that. All right, running out of kitty cat. Exactly, exactly. <sighs> and that is just what has happened to me. No. She's run out. Yeah. No. Yeah. Instead of me kitty cat, you know, those lovely chunks of meat and jelly with vitamins and minerals, mm -hmm. she's come up with some stuff I've never heard of. No kitty cat. What did you do? <laughs> Budweiser Basketball Championships. We're halfway through the first semi-final. It's the Sheffield Sharks against the Worthing Bears. The score at the moment is 38, plays 32 in favour of the Worthing Bears. Well, with us throughout tonight's programme, all the way through to 11 o'clock tonight, is the coach to the Leopards, Billy Mims. Billy, a very exciting first and second quarter, wasn't it? Oh, it's been fantastic. Worthing came right out, full of emotion, fired up. Alan Cunningham's running around, waving the crowd, getting them fired up, and they come out. Colin Irish hit some big shots. They did an outstanding job in the first quarter of isolating Herman Harid on the low block. Herman got the ball easily inside and got some big baskets. But the story to the first half is Herman Harid. He's made my all Windex team. And you, you better explain what Windex is, because I think it might be a sneaky suspicion. My 
might be Windaloon over here. Well, let's put it like this. I need to contact him about doing my flat. See, the lady who cleans my flat says she don't do windows. Herman has cleaned this glass in this arena all night. He's got over nine, ten rebounds in the first half, and he's been a big reason that Worthing has kept in the game offensively. Second and third shots every time down the floor. I've got to just say, Billy, this is this, we're watching at the moment the mascot to the Sacramento Kings. He's our halftime entertainer. He's absolutely wonderful. You've obviously seen him in America, haven't you? Well, he does a great job. Uh, most of the NBA teams now have mascots like him that are very acrobatic. Matter of fact, I'm watching some of the things he does. I believe you can do this for some British basketball teams. <laughs> he used to have a, quite a career as a gymnast, right? My, I'm afraid my days of gymnastics is over, uh, Billy, but uh, I've got to agree with you. He's uh, very acrobatic, this mascot, isn't it? But uh, before we continue with our, our very good mascot here, let's join our commentator, Mike Sharp, for the match stats and key players. Thank you very much indeed, Suzanne, and what a ball game we've got going on down here. Mark Harvey with me for some interesting stats. I think the key one that jumps right out at you on the Sheffield side three for 14 from the three-point line yeah that's not very good at all you want to be up around 35 percent from the three-point line uh to be to be worth taking them uh they've taken a lot of offensive opportunities up there 14 possessions and uh only got three baskets out of it worthing bears numbers look very good 50 percent from the uh, free throw lines 52 percent from two point 33 percent that's looking good yeah that's sound and also of course the big story for me is the rebounding i mean 24 to uh, 15. And this is the man. Two guys have been doing the business for the Worthing Bears. Herman Harid is one, as you heard Billy Mims say. The other one for me is Colin Irish. This was an awesome play. Awesome. Bumped out of court, went to his right hand, and put it away. Shows a lot of strength with the ball and a nice soft touch to finish the play. Coming the other way. Here you see Herman, uh, here you see Huggins penetrating, kicking it out to Finch. Finch hits the three. One of the three three-pointers that Sheffield hit in the half. But that's an excellent transition basket. Okay, let's go back down and join Suzanne Dando. Well, there's more live basketball action for you coming up straight after the break. Stay with us. stage in this first semi-final is 38 plays 32 in favor of the Worthing Bears. Well as you can hear and see the atmosphere here is absolutely electric and we've sent Carton out with his microphone he's out there in the crowd there and he's come up trumps he's on the court side now with the coach of the Thames Valley Tigers Mick Bett. Uh, Mick the Tigers lost to the Bears in three what is it about Worthing at playoff time? They're a good, uh, good team of season pros. They play offensively well together, which you're seeing tonight. Uh, they're on clicking. Uh, this evening they're clicking, and the three games we play with them, they're clicking. Three hard games. Uh, we were unlucky to come out losers. We'll have to work hard next year. They've, they're leading now 38-32. Do you think they have a psychological advantage because they've been here for the past two years? Oh, that's going to count for a hell of a lot, yeah. They're, uh, they're playing well. They've been here before. They know all about Wembley. Sharks just finding their way at the moment. They've had a 15-minute uh, halftime to talk to, think things over. I think they'll come back stronger. Roger Huggins went 19 minutes, 30 seconds before he scored his first point. The player of the year isn't playing that well. Why do you think that is? Uh, lost in the system, perhaps. He's, they're going to have to go to him in the second half, get him shots near the paint. Uh, they've been very patient offensively, but coming up with three-pointers. They're going to have to get it close to the basket. Uh, get Chris Finch involved, too. Chris Finch is a very good penetrator and shooter. Uh, big key for him is getting involved in the second half. So, who's going to win it tonight? Uh, no prediction. As soon as I start backing teams, they better watch out. They're, they're bound to lose. But it's going to be a tight finish. Uh, let's hope for a great game. Back to you, Suzanne. Well, thank you very much, Carton. Well, we can go straight into the third quarter of this first semi-final. It's the Sheffield Sharks against the Worthing Bears. And I'll hand you back to our commentators, Mark Harvey and Mike Sharp. Thank you very much indeed, Suzanne. And what a ball game we have got going on here. Live from Wembley Arena, the Budweiser Championships 1995. The final for Mark Harvey. How's it looking for you? Well, it's going to be a tremendous finish. It's a tight game. Sheffield are only down six. They're not playing well, and they're still in it. That's got to worry Worthing, uh, you know, to, to think they're playing that well, and they've still got Sheffield nipping at their heels. But Worthing's got to just continue to play the tough D for Sheffield to make difficult shots, keep them to one shot, that is, get the rebound, 
and get out and let Colin Irish and uh, Herman Marie go to work on the offensive end. Mick Betts was saying that uh, the Sharks need to use their two, the two guys who really got him here. Huggins, of course, needs the ball in the paint, and the other one was Chris Finch, yeah. who he didn't feel has been doing enough so far. Well, this is typical of Sheffield. They've got that many players that can do it for you. Sometimes Chris Finch or Huggins or Cawthorn or Garnet or Pluto or whoever it will sort of slide into the back seat and other people will pick it up. And it's worked for them so far this year. I, I think they've got to keep with that, that philosophy that anybody's going to do it for them. But I think the key thing that, that Mick Betts said uh, was that they're running a patient offense and settling for three-pointers. They're not getting the ball inside. They need to attack the inside of Worthing's defense. They, that puts Worthing under a lot more pressure, uh, and it might get Worthing in the foul trouble uh, that Sheffield need them to be in to, uh, to, to coast home at the end. Are you going to change your prediction and remind us what it is? I, I think Sheffield are going to do it. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not uh, taking anything away from Worthing. They're, they're, they're just an incredible team with a lot of tremendous players. I mean, Herman's playing out of his skin right now. He's uh, had a tremendous first half. I hope he can keep that up. Uh, I'm, 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 I think it's going to be a very close finish. Uh, but I do think that uh, Sheffield has the firepower to, to finish it off over the 40 minutes. But, uh, hey, anything can happen. Well, I have to tell you, I, I believe the Worthing Bears would do it here, but I'm the man who said that Birmingham Bullets would beat, <laughs> would beat the Sharks. Everybody's <laughs> saying that the Sharks are going to go down. We've been all saying it all year long, and, uh, and they haven't. So, I mean, Worthing can do it, though. There's no question about it. We're into the third quarter. Keith Lewis on the ball under pressure from Chris Finch. Picks it up, needs help, gets it from Irish. Irish happy to go one-on-one -on -one with Donna Gale. Irish shoots over his right shoulder and drains the two. That is such an incredible plan. I mean, Collins hitting those shots, it's just so difficult to stop. He backs you in, uses his strength, his wide body to get some space away, and then just shoots the ball over you. There's not a lot you can maybe be doing that against somebody a foot taller than him, never mind a few inches short. Garnet Gale to Chris Finch. Huggins has the ball. Pops it back out to Finch. Finch puts it on the floor. Doesn't get there. Nelson with the rebound. Outlet to Irish. Will he take it all the way? Pulls up, puts it up for two. Show why he's one of the all-time great scorers in this league. Taking the ball hard, avoiding contact. Uh, Gary Smith had established position for the charge, and uh, he floated by and finished with a nice soft touch. Pulls it out to a 10-point ball game, biggest lead of the game so far. Basket is good. Oh, basket is good for Cawthorn. Gets the whistle. Foul is called on seven. Alan Cunningham. I think that's, I think that's a good foul. You see Alan fronts. He grabs, grabs uh, Todd's arm, but Todd was well on his way to the hoop. He'd, he'd established his offensive move, and it was a continuation of the shot. I think that's a good good call. Two points counts. Now Todd will go to the basket with uh, with one. But the key thing there is Alan's on three now, and uh, three fouls. they're in some serious foul trouble. Eight minutes, 41 seconds left to play in the third. Huggins. Gary Smith puts it up for three. Doesn't get there. Rebound. Oh! Cawthorn had time to come back down with that. Yeah, nice try with that uh, quick little play, but uh, I felt he should have perhaps gathered it in, come down, and uh, gone up strong. Cunningham doesn't get there, doesn't get the rebound, gets the whistle, little push by Garnet Gale. Referee spotted it. I don't know if you saw what Alan Cunningham did there, Mike, but he shot the ball, and as soon as his feet touched the ground, bang, here you see him shoot the ball. As soon as his feet touched the ground, bang, he's going to the hoops hard. You see him flying by here. He caused that foul. He caused him to get that ball back. He is the best player I have ever seen at following his own shot to the offensive boards. Colin Irish again. Floats across the paint that time and drains the two. Again, I mean, he's, he makes it look so simple, but that is such a difficult shot to make. Using his using his strength and his size to create space and then the soft hands to finish the shot. That was nice by Roger Huggins. Looks as if he's finally getting into this one. Roger plays a much plays much taller than he is. And one of the reasons why that is is he shoots the ball from so far behind his head. It's difficult to stop. Nice rejection by Garnet Gale that time. If Sheffield starts to get excited on defense, Worthing, you got to look out. We, we, oh, Go on. 
Cunningham has the ball, puts it on the floor. He's been here before, Alan Cunningham, and every possibility he'll be here again. It's incredible. I mean, it's just, a, it's just an incredible story. The guy is 40 years of age, and he's been so successful playing at a very high level uh, all his career and, and excelling. Steve Nelson gets a buzzer beater, drains the two to five personal. Again, you see Alan Cunningham, he grabbed the hoop there. Todd Cawthorn had shot the basket. He grabs the hoop, dis uh, disturbs the backboard. So that's like a, a goaltending, an interference of the shot, and, uh, and the basket counts. Steve Nelson on the ball, under pressure from Gary Smith. Irish, tough defense this now from the Sheffield Sharks. Irish fade away, puts it up, doesn't get there, rebound, Finch breaks out. Good defense by Garnick Allen. Here you see Sheffield get out to the break so quickly. Unlucky Roger didn't finish that play. Crowd is called on Colin Irish, make that number two. Colin can't believe that call. That's the kind of basketball we'd expect to see from Sheffield. Play the tough D, force him to take the bad shot. Bang, off to the races, get the rebound. Uh, you've got someone like Roger Huggins who runs the floor exceptionally well for a big man, finishes the play. Here you see Cawthorn, both the big men, feeding it back to Huggins and uh, can't quite finish the play, but still picks up the foul two shot. The interesting thing there is you've got Cawthorn and Huggins, Sheffield's two inside players, leading the fast break. I mean, it's quite an incredible thing. One of the two for Huggins, he's up to six. Not one of the two, Roger Huggins. Who's got it? Huggins has it in the paint, gets the two. Sheffield defense, there it is again, oh! Scorer's table goes flying. Woo! Yeah, we're seeing she Sheffield starting to get a little bit more excited and active on their defensive uh, defensive possessions here, and uh, Worthing have got to try to just settle it down, and this is a key possession. Worthing wants to score a basket here and, and try to break a bit of Sheffield's spirit. Pulled it down to a five-point ball game, six minutes, 25 seconds left to play. Here you it see is. Todd Cawthorn coming across on the rotation and uh, knocking the ball out of bounds. Nelson gets help from Herman. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Lee Lewis. Irish has it inside. Oh, what an assist! Beautiful from Irish. Lewis had a beautiful assist. It was an incredible athletic uh, ability just to catch that pass. It was uh, a lot of strength needed and soft hands again to, uh, to control that ball. Uh, and make the quick quick pass. Sheffield coming down, turning the ball over. This is a good spell for Worthing. They needed a score, they got a stop. Here you go, ball goes in to the wing. No, 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 no! Colin Irish showing good hands, catch the ball with one hand and bang, straight across to Herman Murray, love the play. With the floor, Steve Nelson gets the whistle, the foul is called on number four. Gary Smith makes that foul number one on Gary. Steve Nelson will go to the line for two. Gary goes to the bench, Sean Mackay comes back. Every time the Sharks look as if they're gonna make a little run, the Bears are right back in there. Yeah, they, they look very relaxed out there. They're really flowing offensively, moving the ball around very well, and, uh, and Allen's sort of giving them free license. The only thing he's demanding from them right now is that they play the D and get the ball. After that, he's letting them play offensively, and uh, if you let Colin Irish and Herman Reid go to work, they tie up so much defensive attention from the other team that allows guys like Steve Nelson and uh, Cleve Lewis, who are exceptional players, to, uh, to take advantage of uh, any let -up. Steve Nelson gets one of the two. Got it, Gale. Puts it on the floor, goes baseline. Rejected illegally by Colin Irish, I think it is. We're seeing some great one-on-one uh, -on -one plays here from some some good basketball players. You've seen some tremendous uh, change of pace from people like Garnet Gale and Cleve Lewis and Colin Irish. It's, it's a joy to watch these guys go to work from the outside. Any kids that are watching the game, uh, take note of the way these guys stutter step. They attack, slow up, and attack again, and uh, really turning the defenders inside out. It's, it's a pleasure to watch. Garnet Gale gets the first, but we must just mention Colin Irish is now on three fouls. That makes the third player on three fouls for the Bears. Well, this is going to be the problem. Uh, if, if Worthing can uh, stay in there, uh, player-wise, they stand a chance for this game, but if they start to foul out, uh, uh, they're in a lot of trouble. The press is on again. Cleve. Cross-court to Nelson. It's over the halfway line. It's with Cunningham. Ah, 
showing a little bit of exp uh, uh, composure there, nice nice press break, and uh, had a good chance to attack the basket, and uh, and then you see Herman Harid keeping the ball alive, and uh, they get it back, another possession. Herman Harid for the Worthing Bears. They're taking a bit of a rest here. Aren't they? Uh, it's smart. I mean, they uh, they can't play the intense style of game that Sheffield want them to play, so they're just taking a bit of time here, milking a bit of the shot clock, and uh, getting a bit of rest. Cunningham gets the whistle foul, is called on 13. Now it's Roger Huggins, make that number two. Worthing will play at this pace all night long. Just let him walk the ball up the floor, go one on one, kick the ball out, go one on one again, kick the ball up, shoot, penetrate. I mean, this is what they want to do, and then they get a nice little uh, get Huggins in a, in a bit of foul trouble there. And uh, again, you know, smart basketball by Worthing. Coach Jim Brandon shuffling his pack once again, takes out Chris Finch, brings back Pluto, needing to find the right combination on the floor to get, get the shots back into this one. They're down by six, less than five minutes left to play in the third. Offensive foul that time. Foul is called on 10. Cleve Lewis make that number two. Again, calling a moving screen foul. Here come the Sheffield Sharks. They need to do something. Garnet Gale on the ball. Pluto comes across. It's with Cawthorn, however. Huggins. Huggins. Pops it back out to Sean Mackay. Sean, nice drive to the hole. Sucks in the defense. Dishes it off to Todd Cawthorn for two. Exactly. That's what both teams are doing very well. You see Sean Mackay drawing. Draws Alan Cunningham into the defense. Holds him there. Kicks it out to Cawthorn. Nice touch for two points. We've got us a four-point ball game, 49 to 45. Herman off the glass, Beautiful. drains the two. Beautiful pick and roll. Was able to get open off the screen and uh, take advantage of the one-on-one uh, -on -one opportunity. Cawthorn puts it on the floor to the left hand. The layup doesn't get there. Nice outlet pass. That's a backcourt violation. Yes, it is. Once the ball comes over the halfway line, you're not allowed to take it back. It was very quick, but it did happen. That's, um, it's funny that uh, Todd and Roger seem to be struggling a little bit inside, missing some, uh, some chip shots. They're not easy shots by any means, but uh, ones that they, you'd expect them to make. Huggins leans in, gets it off, doesn't get there. Who's got the ball? Alan Cunningham, and he runs the floor so well. Lead pass. Oh, and one! And one! Steve Nelson with a nice bucket on the assist by Alan Cunningham. A look-away pass. Cunningham puts it away and gets the whistle. Who would have thought that uh, Worthing would be beating Sheffield down the floor? Unbelievable. Nice play. Good composure. Good vision by uh, Alan Cunningham. Really showing his experience there. Sheffield have got to stay calm here. They don't want to start getting uh, uh, out of control. Keep their composure. Keep playing the game. Keep uh, trying to work it inside. 53 points to 45. Three minutes, 35 seconds left to play in the third. Budweiser Championship basketball action. Sean Mackay has the ball. Back into Huggins, broken up by Herman Harid. They say Bears got the last touch. Sheffield are starting to look a little bit disorientated right now, and they need to just get a little bit composure. Jim Brandon may want to take a timeout uh, just to calm the guys down a bit, but... They have Worthing in foul trouble. They've got a lot to play for here. They should be very positive and attacking, and uh, they seem to be uh, reeling a bit, and uh, it's not like them at all. Just seven seconds left on the shot clock. But let's not take anything away from Worthing. They're doing a tremendous job packing the defense in and uh, taking advantage of their offensive opportunities. Sean doesn't get it off too late. Too late, doesn't get there. Poor decision that time by Sean Mackay. Yeah, it was. Just a lack of awareness. He didn't realize that the shot clock had run down and, uh, and didn't get the shot off quickly enough. Made one nope. too many passes there and uh, cost him a possession. This is game one. We have coming later game two. And, of course, tomorrow afternoon over on Sky Sports 2, we'll have the championship final. Who will it be? Only time will tell. Colin seemed to get an extra step there. Has the rebound, loses it, gets it back. Colin Irish working hard, needs help. 
inside to Cleve. Oh, good idea. It doesn't come off. Nice try. Sheffield got to do a better job on baseline defense. They're getting, uh, getting beat on the rotation. That is, they're going across to help out on the baseline. The other guy on the opposite side of the court's wide open for Worthing, and they need to rotate down and pick him up. Two minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the third. Pluto on the ball to Huggins. Huggins gets the two. What a tough bucket. Alan Cunningham looks to have taken a knock there, so uh, hopefully he can run that off for Worthing. They don't want to lose him. Ball is with Alan Cunningham. Cunningham puts it on the floor, does well, pops it back out to clean. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Herman has it. Foul, I think it's on Sean McCarthy. Yes, it is. Foul number one on Sean. Alan Cunningham's going to go to the bench. That injury is going to take him out of the ball game for a while. In comes Mark Scott wearing four. I hope Alan's not out for long because it, it looks like it's it's kind of like a bruise or a knock. And uh, if he cools off, it's only going to tighten up more. He's got to keep that loose, keep that uh, keep that injury warm. Herman pulls up, puts up the two, and drains it. What a play! What a play! You, you couldn't ask for uh, for any more from, from somebody tonight. The guy's really delivered the goods so far tonight. Unbelievable game he's having. White ball is the call. Hawthorne didn't like that call. One minute, 40 seconds left to play. 55 points to 47. Worthing Bears still with the lead. Sheffield cannot afford to let Worthing walk the ball up the court like this and just milk the clock down. They'll do this all night long. They really need to, to try to increase the tempo again and keep it, keep it up and go at Worthing and try to tire them out. Foul is called on Sean Mackay. That's two quick fouls for Sean. They can afford, I mean, if anybody, if any of the two teams can afford a bit of foul trouble at Sheffield, they've got to try to stir things up, mix it up, and try to create something and make something happen for themselves. Because at the minute, things are going very much Worthing's way, and they've got to disrupt that tempo that Worthing have established, this slow walk it up style. Uh, they've got to get up in their face and, and uh, try to change it and get it upbeat. Todd Cawthorn goes to the bench, had a good talking to then from coach Jim Brandon, in for the first time wearing 15, Richard Windle. Mark Scott gives it back to Steve Nelson, puts it up for no points. Herman Marine with another offensive board. Make that 14 rebounds to Herman Harid in this ball game. What a pass by Herman. Big fade away. Clean. Great ball movement by the Bears. They're playing exceptionally good basketball right now. They're, I can see why they beat Thames Valley. I mean, they're moving the ball so well. They're penetrating, kicking it out, penetrating again. Here you see the kick across. Sheffield not getting the rotation. Pluto late. All over. Two shots for, for Worthing. Substitution's going to bring Garnet Gale back into the ball game. Sean Mackay goes out. One minute exactly left to play in the third. 55 points to 47. It's Worthing Bears all the way. Another thing that surprises me is that we haven't seen Worthing zone yet. They've done, they've done a, a tremendous job keeping uh, Sheffield to under 40, uh, under 50 points to this point in the game, and they've done it all with man-to-man -man defense, which, uh, which surprises me. I, I would have felt that uh, that would have been asking a little bit too much of this team. Lee drains them both to nine personal. We're back to a 10-point ball game. Less than a minute left to play in the third. Pluto inside, dishes it off to Wendell. Wendell with the fake, walks with it. Not yet into the pace of this game, Richard Wendell. It's tough for a young player like him to come in and uh, try to establish himself inside. I think he's got to be feeling a little bit of the, the atmosphere and, and pressure, and uh, he's got to just sort of take his time, gather his composure, and uh, go out and take the shot. Colin Irish, as you say, just walks it up court. Sets a real high screen for Steve Nelson and gets the ball back. What are you going to do against that? What are you going to do against that? Irish. Absolutely phenomenal move. Again, I mean, the guy's been doing it all night long. He's been doing it all his career. But, I mean, you, you, there's not a lot you can do against it. He's got such strength and he's a wide body and he's got such tough, soft touch around the hoop. Another turnover by the Sheffield Sharks. They'll be looking Irish, to take the let's last see what shot. Collins going to do here. There are six seconds left. 
Four seconds left. He walked with it. Ah! Now, that's not like Colin Irish. Well, I think he was looking to draw the foul there and perhaps got a little bit unlucky. I think he might have got hit on the arm, but uh, refs weren't having any of it. Sheffield have a chance here to, uh, to perhaps sink another basket at the death. Only three seconds left to play. Ball will come in from Pluto back in the ball game. Top fourth on. Huggins has it. Puts it up for... Let's see how many. For two. Two points are good for Roger Huggins. Well, that's twice Sheffield have uh, shot on the death. Here you see, just makes a simple move up to the ball, turns, shoots, beautiful shot. 59 points to 47. Good lead for the Worthing Bears. We'll be right back after this. You're watching Sky Sports. Crazy. Move over, Jürgen. The new White Hart Lane favorite is Horace Morris. And now that Gavin Hastings has bid farewell to Murrayfield, voices will ring out for Matt Blundin. The Claymores, Admirals, Monarchs and Dragons storm onto your screens this weekend, so look out for new heroes. Scotland take on unbeaten Amsterdam, while London face Barcelona. The World League of American Football, Sunday evening at 7 on Sky Sports. When people started traveling more often, we introduced what was right for the times. When people wanted to carry less cash, we also offered what was right for the times. And today, when the world doesn't always revolve on your terms, American Express introduces a credit card that gives you the credit you deserve. The new American Express credit card rewards you with an interest rate you'll appreciate and no fee for the first year. To apply, call now on 0800-700-717. It's the right card for the times. Is your bill a little on the loud side? <coughs> then worry not. <coughs> now Sky Satellite subscribers can make extra savings on BT residential discount schemes offering up to 20% off calls. <coughs> For details of these discount schemes and Sky's special deal on BT Premier Line, call 01506 488884. <coughs> and you too can shrink your bill. <coughs> Conventional wisdom has always told us what can and can't be done. If our engineers had respected convention, multi-link beam suspension would never have been developed. And this car wouldn't exist. to the Wembley Arena. The score at the end of the third, 59 points to 50. And we can tell you the last shot by Roger Huggins was in fact a three-pointer. Both feet firmly planted outside the line, puts it up and drains the three. That was a big play with just three seconds left on the shot clock when the ball came in. Absolutely, that's twice Sheffield have done that. Jason Swain in the, at the end of the first quarter and now Roger at the end of the third. Uh, again, they're only nine points out of it, but Worthing is doing a fine job. They can't get too worried about the score. They just gotta keep plugging away, one possession at a time, stay out of foul trouble, and really try to limit Sheffield to one shot. Remember, this is the first of the semi-final games tonight, coming later. Exide Manchester Giants versus the London Towers. We'll be talking about that one a little bit more a little later on, but now let's get to the final quarter. Can the Sheffield Sharks come back into this one? Sean Mackay on the ball. Finch. Back to Sean, looking inside, doesn't... Nothing on there. Ooh, gets the whistle. It's on Mark Scott. I wonder if Sean's going to go to the line here. Yes, he is. Here you see Sean with the, using his speed okay, to get round. Uh, uh, I think it's Alan, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, yeah, Alan Prescott. Sorry. And taking the ball right to Mark Scott. Not afraid. Uh, not afraid to go in there with the big boys. And uh, shows a lot of heart. This uh, this young kid. And. Uh, done a tremendous job for Sheffield at the point, uh, point guard position, which is probably the hardest position to play uh, on the court. You've got to be a, a leader. You've got to tell other people, uh, all the other players to do their job and how you want it done. Recognize defenses. You're on the offense. You've got to do it all. And uh, he's done a fine job for, for Sheffield this season. Sean Mackay to four personal. We've got us an eight-point ball game. Nine and a half left to play in the game. Steve Nelson throws it away by a Mark Scott. 
I think Steve should have taken that shot, really. He, he'd beaten the man, and uh, really, Sean wasn't going to be able to stop him from shooting that, and everyone was expecting him to, not expecting to pass back. Garnet Gale to Huggins. Sean passed up on the three, gets it back to Cawthorn. Good ball movement, but no penetration whatsoever. Sean McKay. Finally gets it into Huggins and is fouled by Herman Harid. Foul number three on Herman. Huggins and Herman battling away inside. Sheffield really trying to play the two-man game. Here you see Chris Finch punching the ball into her, uh, Roger and uh, Herman just shoving him and getting his legs in the way, basically impeding his uh, pass to the basket, and, uh, and that's a foul. Mark Scott comes out back in Colin Irish. Of course, uh, Sheffield independently, that is any foul. Now they go to the line and, uh, and shoot two shots. First one is good. Sheffield very good from the line tonight, and that, that could be a difference coming down the stretch. Huggins makes them both to 15 personal. We're down to a six-point ball game. The ball will come in from the end line. This is where Sheffield usually make their move. That's right here. They're putting on this uh, zone pressure. They're going to try and double-team Colin Ash right away. Worthing doing a good job of breaking this pressure well. Steve Nelson to Prescott. Alan Cunningham slow coming up, but it opens up in front of him, puts it up. Oh, baby! Nice shot by Alan Cunningham, uh, showing a lot of experience there. Gets his feet under him and uh, straight up easy two for him. And a turnover by the Sharks. Gives the ball right back to the Worthing Bears. Worthing Bears looking to three-peat, as they say, they won this competition the last two years. Will they make it three in a row? Foul is called on Sean Mackay. Make that foul number three on Sean. Steve Nelson will go to the line for two. Sheffield aren't showing the kind of composure at the offensive end that, that, uh, that earned them the title this season. Uh, they're really, uh, really not uh, taking their time with the ball. They're really rushing things and have had, have had quite a few unforced turnovers this, uh, this game. Steve Nelson fails to make number one. One shot. Free throws always important in games like these. Uh, rebounding and free throws, two very key areas that uh, win or lose your ball game. Steve misses them both. Sean McKay pushes it for the shots. Hawthorne looking inside, nobody inside. Finch feeds Huggins now. Low post gets it back out to Finch. Finch, nice layup. Doesn't get there. The putback is good for. Was it Finch or Cawthorn? Cawthorn, I think, got his hand to that, but Finch created that opportunity and Todd finished it. That should give Sheffield a little bit of inspiration, uh, taking advantage of some second effort there from Todd. Just a six-point ball game. Irish with the long three. Doesn't get there. Stolen away. This could cut it to four. Nice bounce pass to Garnet Gale. It's good for two. He does cut it to four. Garnet Gale. What a nice play by Garnet. Phenomenal hands. Here you see Chris Finch. Nice bounce pass through the defense. Takes a hit, regains the regains the ball, and finishes the play. That was a, a that was a lovely uh, layup by Garnet Gale. Cleve Lewis coming back into the ball game. Prescott goes out. Sean McKay goes out. Back in for Sheffield. Gary Smith. Well, so far this game, every time Sheffield's come knocking on the door, Worthing's had the answer, and that's been a three-pointer from Colin or, or some inside stuff from Herman. So let's see if they can uh, establish that trend again. Seven and a half minutes left to play in the game. Herman Harid playing the point. Pops it out to Cunningham. Cunningham gets it off the glass for two. Well, there you go. I mean, uh, Sheffield get it back to four, and uh, Worthing come back with a huge basket. Gary Smith cross court. The ball is with Finch. Garnet Gale. Sheffield doing a very good job of moving the ball around on the perimeter, but not really getting the ball inside where it really needs to be for them to be successful, I think. Garnet was looking for a whistle there, doesn't get it. Steve Nelson out of control, doesn't get there, but guess who takes the rebound and puts it away? Herman Harid. 
Mr. Harid, he's been doing it all night. Like Billy Mims said, uh, he's been cleaning the glass all night. Oh, sorry, I think there's a foul been called. Technical foul called on Steve Nelson. Make that number four for throwing the ball away after the basket. Referee says the team have been warned not to do it. It is a way of uh, getting some extra time for the guys to rest, isn't it? Uh, I will I will say this, that uh, Worthing have been using, a, a, you know, using cagey tactics like that. Not, I wouldn't say that's foul play. I mean, they got caught. They're, they're paying the price for it now. But it's smart. They, by knocking the ball away, it takes Sheffield out of their transition. And if, if Worthing can get away with it, why not do it? I mean, uh, it, it's smart play, but I think they've been caught doing it here and uh, and now paying the price with the technical and they're gonna have to watch it from from now on in and alan cunningham still arguing with the officials well you know how alan is he, he likes to talk <laughs> almost as much as you Mike. <laughs> first one is good for garnet gale Any, and number two. Sorry, but any kids out there watching this uh, this game on TV, take a look at any any of these players when they shoot their free throws. The concentration uh, on the target, it's it's incredible. It's, uh, it's uh, they're being very successful from the line, and it's all to do with the concentration. Irish doesn't get there. Broken up. Gary Smith has it. Controls it well. Three on one break. Oh, turnover. Let's see what we got. I think he may have stepped on the line. Yeah, they're saying he stepped out of bounds, which is uh, an unlucky break for Sheffield, and uh, I think we would have seen some showtime there had he been able to keep that in, because I think uh, Garnet was coming across to Huggins for a Garnet bit Gale of a was actually out of court and then came back in without re-establishing himself. That was the problem. Six minutes, 12 seconds left to play in the game. See Herman it Reed is. and Colin Irish working a screen and roll here. It's been very successful for the whole game. Irish doesn't get there. Blue ball is the call. 65 points to 59. Sharks have the ball, pushing fast. It's with Cawthorn. Comes back to Garnet Gale. Put it up for no points. Not bad. Gale has it again. Huggins and Gary Smith. Still a lot of time left in this game. Absolutely. Garnet Gale dribbling the ball off his foot, but able to keep it before it went back across the halfway line. Long shot from Chris Finch is no good. They're just not getting inside, I, are they? No, and I don't think I've ever seen Sheffield so cold from the outside. Oops! That one hurts. Three-pointer from Alan Cunningham to 14 personal. I was just going to say, Worthing had stalled a few possessions offensively, Colin coming up a bit short, and then bang, Mr. Cunningham answering uh, Worthing prayers there with a three-pointer. Finch comes around the top. It's with Gary Smith. Will he put up the three? No, he won't. Cawthorn inside. Cawthorn with the finger roll doesn't get there. Gets the rebound. Goes back to the finger roll. Is good for two. Cawthorn's missed a few chippies there, but he stuck with that play. Didn't get his head down. Stayed with it. Got the ball back and, uh, and finished the play. Tremendous second effort. Seven-point ball game. Four minutes, 44 seconds left to play. Is there any way back for the Sheffield Sharks? Harid playing the point. Just dribbling, then goes to work. Oh! Oh, Herman Harid! Oh, my goodness. Sends it down with style. Here it comes again. You've got to take the ball out of his left hand. He goes left in Garnet Gale's face. That is an NBA play. That. That's, if that does nothing more than fire up the Worthing guys, that's two points and an offensive play well done. Somebody's down injured. Let's see what it is. Doesn't look good. Cunningham, it does not look good. He's holding his lower back area. He's in a lot of pain down there. He, he's had back trouble before in the past. I think, uh, I think Todd Cawthorn uh, got a little bit frustrated there and may have, uh, may have popped him. I'd like to see that again. I didn't really catch it, but Sheffield have to be very careful not to lose their composure right now. And let's hope for Worthing's sake that uh, that they don't lose, uh, like you can't really see from there, but I think, I think Todd Cawthorn, uh, either inadvertently or intentionally, I can't really say, uh, has hit, uh, hit Allen and uh, he's in a lot of pain. This is gonna hurt them if he has to go off, isn't it? Not, not only for tonight, but if they were to win this one, they do need him if they make it into the final. Yes, no, no doubt about it. 
I mean, uh, I, I, I can't, I didn't see that play, so I can't really comment, but Worthing don't want to respond in any way. They want to just continue to play with a lot of composure and uh, play the game they've been playing so far. I think what some of the other players are saying is they're suggesting that uh, Cunningham goes off there, maybe to rest it a bit, but I don't think Alan Cunningham wants to go off this court. Well, I don't know. What do you think, Mike? Are his arms and legs still attached to his body? <laughs> I think I think if they are... Let's the take another is... look. Let's take another look, see if we can see what happens down in the left-hand corner of the screen. Now, in slow motion, he's already holding his yeah. back. He's already holding his back by the time he comes into the shot. So we're not sure what happened. It looked like something between... And Cunningham is now talking to coach Jimmy Brandon. He had something to say there to coach Jim Brandon. Yeah, I think... Uh, I, I mean, uh, it's, it's not Jimmy Brandon's style. He is not a dirty, dirty tactics-type person. Uh, he's a real ambassador of the game. I think Alan's just... Uh, hopefully just gone over and said all right that's enough of that <laughs> and let's just carry on playing ball but uh, it's not jimmy's style at all i think it might if anything it might have been just a bit of frustration on uh, todd's part alan makes them both to 16 personal and we've got us 72 points to 61 72 61 11 point ball game four minutes left to play i think this one could be going to the worthing bears we'll see cawthorn with the fake gets the two that's where Sheffield need to go. They need the ball inside, and that's the result they're probably going to get if they do get it inside. But, you know, we've been saying that all night, and you cannot take away the job that the Worthing Bears have done here to stop them from going inside. No, they've done a tremendous job. They're a very good team. I said it earlier on, at uh, hacking in the defense and forcing you to shoot the ball. And unfortunately for Sheffield, they haven't been able to respond by hitting threes and then forcing Worthing to come out of that uh, packed in defense and then of course at the other end Herman Harid and Colin Irish have been going to work all night long I mean here's Colin on the line again after taking uh, half the Sheffield team to the hoop yet again and he sticks it to 22 personal Worthing have played a very intelligent basketball game this game has gone the way Worthing want to be. The tempo's been slow, they've been allowed to walk the ball up the floor and then explode inside with the quick penetration and either kick it out for the shot or create the foul opportunity or the, or the big play inside. Stolen away by Herman. Herman! Oh, reverse layup doesn't get there. Woo. Colin Irish was looking to dunk that one, but uh, Herman said, I'm going all the way. That was a walk, no doubt about it. He walked with it. J Jimmy Brandon needs a timeout here. And he takes one. Good call, Mark Harvey. Yeah, he needs to settle his guys down. I mean, they're, they're just playing basketball that's not indicative of, uh, of the league champions. And again, I don't want to take anything away from Worthing. They are forcing the issue here and taking it right to Sheffield. Three minutes, 21 seconds left to play. I wonder if we can take a look at what, uh, take a listen to what Coach Jim Brandon's saying. In fact, here he is. Put it on the floor after you get it. Let's go, though. Come on, let's stand. This is your show. Let's go. Come on, now. Using that timeout to try to instill a bit of confidence and a bit of fire back into this Sheffield side. There's not much he can say right now. They know what they need to do to win this game. And uh, there we see the foul trouble. Half a dozen of, of one and six of the other, really. Worthing Bears in more foul trouble, yeah. but they also lead by 11 with only three minutes left to play. The foul trouble will only come into play if this game should go into overtime, I think. Yeah, anything can happen, but I think you're right. I think Worthing should be able to ride it out, but, but Sheffield are a very explosive team, and they're by no means out of this game. Lee Lewis on the ball. Sheffield pressure. Cunningham pops it out. Nelson does want to keep it alive, but then gives it up. Cawthorn has it, dribbles it round the back. That's a backcourt violation. No doubt about it. Give it up, Roger. You don't want to be dribbling. Just pick it up and give it to a guard. Didn't realize where he was. The foot went over, then came back. There's nothing more frustrating for a coach than seeing your big man try to do too much with the basketball. Just give the ball up to the point guard and get your butt down in the post and do your job. Three minutes left to play in the ball game. 74-63. Worthing Bears lead it and looking good. The first semi-final. Colin Irish doesn't get the roll. Rebound. Sean Mackay. 
such a quick release, doesn't he, Martin? I mean, the guy just goes at you really hard, pulls up on a dime, and shoots the ball like unbelievably quick. Chris Finch doesn't get there. Rebound Cunningham doesn't want to fall on my back. He'll be feeling sore tonight, that's for sure. Cleve pops it out to Nelson. Bears will look to run a little clock. Found his ball on Huggins. That's foul number three on Roger Huggins. Two minutes, 23 seconds left to play. Still an 11-point ball game. Alan Cunningham will go to the line. Is he on the way to another championship? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think so. It's looking good for them. I mean, there's still still plenty of time, but the way things are going right now, Worthing are doing a fine job, and, they, and they've deserved, they definitely deserve to be in the position they're in now. But this is what I love about sports, and this is what I love about basketball. Cinderella stories, just, it makes it so much more exciting. This season has been all season long, anybody's beaten anybody, and it's been, it's tremendous to see it taking over again, extending into the playoffs, and Worthing, who finished seventh, challenging league leaders in, in, to the finals. It's fabulous. Garnet Gale gets the whistle on Colin Irish. Will go to the line. Colin Irish commits foul number four. Sheffield uh, will be definitely pressing after these free throws, looking to uh, try to create some turnovers and uh, get the ball back. They need, some, they need some possession and they need some big scores. Colin Irish, the man who's never committed a foul in his life. <laughs> Colin Irish getting the Worthing crowd into this one. He's already celebrating. He's already celebrating. Woo! It's looking good. Looking good indeed. Garnet trying to hush this crowd up, but he's going to have to work hard to do that now. 13 personal for Garnet Gale. As we wind down to two minutes left to play. Gunningham does well. Ball is with Nelson. Pops it back out to Cleve. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Worthing Bears just using up the clock. Irish has it. Irish will take it home for two. No, no help there. Garnicale wanted some help there on the, on the penetration. Colin Irish beats him baseline and uh, Sheffield didn't rotate. Chris Finch steps outside the three-point line, drains the three. Eight personal. Where they want to milk the clock here and use up as much possession as they possibly can. Still 11 points in the ball game. Steve Nelson has it. One minute, 18 seconds left to play. I think that's all she wrote. I think Chris Finch commits the offense. Yes, it is. Well, with a minute and 14 seconds, it's just a little bit over two possessions. You, you have a 30-second shot clock. That means once you gain possession of the ball, you have 30, uh, 30 seconds to shoot it. And uh, with a minute and 14, there's just a little bit over two possessions left. And what Worthing need to do now is they don't need to score again. Let's take a look at Colin Irish going, doing such a great job. All night, all season, all career. Here he goes. Good quickness, good strength. No weak side help from Sheffield. Uh, they're not playing the kind of game that they've been playing all season long, and uh, they're paying the price for it right now. Let's take a look at the leading scorers on the ball game so far. One minute, 14 seconds left to play. Colin Irish leads them all with 25. Great help from Harid and Cunningham for the Sheffield Sharks. It hasn't really happened tonight. 15, 14, 13. Huggins for Vaughan game. Just not good enough. No, perhaps uh, it's always difficult when you win the league to... to Maintain the intensity and the drive that you need to win in the playoffs. It's, in, it's a whole new season, and Worthing have just turned it on, and they've seized the opportunity. They've had an average season, well, pretty poor season by their standards, and uh, I think they've, uh, they've indicated themselves tonight, and uh, it looks like they're going to the finals. I think, as you say, they're going to the finals, but one cannot take away the job that the Sheffield Sharks with Jimmy Brandon have done this season. Not at all. I mean, uh, they have nothing to be ashamed of. They, they can hold their heads high. They've had a very successful... Uh, uh, they've done the, uh, the Cup League double. I mean, uh, geez, I think every team would dream of that, and uh, they've accomplished it the first season. I think it's been an incredible uh, season for them. As we wind down, one minute, 12 seconds left to play in the ball game. The first semi-final... No bucket that time. Rebound, another one for Herman. 
Triple team off the foot, white ball is the call. Make that 16 rebounds for Herman Harid to go with his 18 points. What a performance. I think uh, Colin Irish has been the uh, been the difference in the scoring, but for me, the overall performance of Herman Harid, he's my man of the match. He's just had a phenomenal all-round game for, uh, for uh, the Worthing Bears. Less than a minute left to play in the first semi-final. Foul is called on Chris Finch. Make that foul number three. Cleve will go to the line for two. 79 points to 67. Comfortable win in the end, I think, for the Worthing Bears. Definitely not at all uh, the way I expected it to come down the last couple of minutes, but uh, playoff basketball and Worthing are playing some inspired basketball and uh, all the credit to them. Just to get back to Herman Reed, I mean, the man has done everything for the, for Worthing Bears tonight, and he's been he has been the difference for them. He's played the defense. He's he's held Huggins and Cawthorn to well below average uh, season totals and uh, rebounded, run the floor, and, and scored when he's had to. And uh, definitely my choice for man of the match tonight. 43 seconds left to play. Basket is good. Three points for Jason Swain, a big three to eight personal. And a full court press, white ball is the call, 33 seconds, 10 point ball game, the long outlet pass, look at this. In fact, they're working it out, there's the pass, and Colin Irish accepts the blame for that one. Perhaps it's a little closer, that could have been a big play, but uh, I think this is too little too late by Sheffield, unfortunately, for them. Jason puts up another three, doesn't get that. Huggins has it taken away. Cleve Lewis on the ball. And we blow the whistle, no point really. 15 seconds left to play, 10 points in the ball game. And the Worthing Bears, the crowd going wild for Worthing. So they are on their way to the final. Absolutely, so they should. They've had a tremendous game. They, they followed Alan Cunningham's game plan to a T and uh, it, it's worked tremendously well. They needed to keep Sheffield to one shot. They've done that. They needed to run when the opportunity presented itself. They did that. They needed to uh, get the ball inside to Herman and let him go to work and uh, he had a stellar game along with Colin Irish. First one is good for Cleve Lewis to 11 personal. Good all-round game by the Bears. Everybody has showed up tonight. Definitely. And another one. Huggins has the ball. 13 seconds left to play. Finch to Gale. Gets the two. Herman, what's he going to do? He will go to the line. Just three ticks in the clock remaining. Good awareness by, uh, I believe that was Cleve Lewis that threw that in, uh, to see Herman wide open down long. Sheffield pressing up, leaving the man deep, and uh, uh, Worthing able to pick him out and uh, get the easy, uh, get the ball up the court quite easily. Just three seconds left to play. Herman Harid on the line gets... I don't know if you noticed the reaction of the Worthing fans there, but Herman Harid is not renowned for his free throw shooting. <laughs> so they're quite happy to see him score that. And uh, just goes to show he has done everything for them tonight, including hit his free throws. Yeah, he makes them both. Three seconds left to play. There we go, the end of the ball game. 84 points to 72. 84 points to 72. It's the end of the road for the league-winning Sheffield Sharks. Tonight, the Worthing Bears send them home, and the Worthing Bears go on to tomorrow's final. Go, 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 Colin Irish, getting congratulations from Roger Huggins. The men who've done it tonight, as far as I'm concerned, Herman Harid, 20 points and 18 rebounds, and Colin Irish, 25 points. Would you agree with that? Yeah, undoubtedly. I mean, those two guys were the difference, without a doubt, especially Herman Harid, like I said earlier. At the beginning of the game, I must admit, I picked Sheffield to win it. I, I didn't. I don't want to uh, seem like uh, Worthing are uh, under. Any mean by any means, they don't count them out, they're a good team. And Worthing Bears win it, 84 to 72. You're watching Sky Sports.
the Exide Manchester Giants, Mr. Mike Hanks. So, can Alan Cunningham's Worthy Bears make it three in a row, or will it be the Manchester Giants? Let's join our commentators for tonight, Mark Harvey and Mike Sharp. Thank you very much indeed, Suzanne. This is the big one. John Carr, Doncaster's coach. Mark Harvey with me. We are looking at a legend. A legend, isn't he? He's, he does so many things for Worthing. Coaching, playing, it, it's unbelievable. And to consider that he's doing it at 40 years of age is, uh, is a real tribute to him. It's, uh, he's amazing. There it is, a championship, two, four, six, seven in a row from 1989 all the way through. Will it be Worthing in 1995? Only time will tell. Alan Cunningham, at last year's game he retired, but injury to his big man meant he had to come back out. This is the starting five for the Blue Circle Worthing Bears. Herman Harid, Alan Cunningham, Cleve Lewis, Steve Nelson, and Colin Irish, the same five that started last night. Yeah, they're they're a very good starting five. They're, where Worthing fall down a bit is perhaps they don't have as much depth as Manchester coming off the bench, but Herman Harid and uh, uh, Colin Irish are uh, two fantastic players, and Manchester's really got to look to shut them down and keep Harid off the boards uh, if they want to be successful tonight. No doubt Herman Harid was the man last night. Let's That's take a look so, yeah. now. Let's take a look at the Exide Manchester Giants starting five. Here it comes. Mark Robinson wears seven. Cameron Johnson wears eight. Danny Craven, ten. Kevin St. Kitts, eleven. And Trevor Gordon, that general, he was big last night, wasn't he? He was huge. He came up with really big plays. He did a lot for them. Not only was he rebounding and setting big screens and playing the defense last night, but he was also passing the ball and uh, doing a lot of offensive uh, scoring. So uh, he was a very important player for them last night. And I look for him to be the key again tonight. If he plays that kind of inspired basketball inside, uh, I look to think that uh, Manchester will take this championship. Both fairly big teams as well, aren't they? I think um, I think the size advantage in my book goes to Manchester inside, but uh, Worthing have a definite size advantage in the backcourt. That is the, the the guards' position or the outside players. They have a size advantage there, and you'll look to uh, keep your eye open on Colin Irish. He's a he's a, a a bit of an everything man. He'll play on the perimeter and can shoot the ball from everywhere, but he'll look to post up, especially if Manchester have a smaller player on him. He'll look to post up and make inside moves. He's so strong and wide, and he's got such lovely soft touch around the hoop. Uh, he'll be a real handful for Manchester tonight. Is Herman Harid going to be up against Trevor Gordon? Are they going to play each other at both ends of the court, do you think? I don't know. I, I would be... Uh, they could match up. It depends how Allen feels tonight. I mean, the, Manchester have two very big players in Danny Craven and, uh, and Trevor Gordon, and he and uh, Herman have to match up against him. I, I think yeah, you might see uh, Worthing go into a little bit of zone tonight and uh, uh, not play man to man, but if they do, I think uh, Herman will take Trevor, and it's going to be a battle, no doubt about it. Okay, put the neck on the line. Who's going to win this one? I, I, think, uh, I think Manchester are going to win it. To win last week, and uh, I'm going to stick with that. But uh, I mean, Worthing have showed me something last night against Sheffield, and if they